Hey guys, Crystal and Family here. So I was recently going through the internet, you know, and I came across a couple of articles that really kind of pissed me off. They were very derogatory towards realtors. Stuff like how all real estate agents are lying, cheating bastards who just want your money. It makes me so angry. Oh! Yes, in every barrel there's a couple of bad apples, but the real estate agents that I know are very professional and take very seriously their main duty, which is to protect their clients during a real estate transaction. In order to do that job, there's a lot of rules, and I mean a lot of rules, that we have to follow. A state of Arizona has a bunch of laws that pertain to real estate, and if we're realtors, which means we're members of the National Association of Realtors, then we have to follow this very lengthy code of ethics, which describes our duties to our clients, to other realtors, and to the public. It's a lot of rules we have to follow. And believe me, these days there's plenty of people that'll rat you out if you don't follow those rules and land you right in front of a committee that's going to decide whether you're gonna pay a fine, get suspended, or lose your license. If you really cross the line, you could end up in prison. So believe me, it is in our best interest as well as everybody else's to follow the rules. When you sign a contract here in Arizona, you sign a piece of paper that says, yes, I acknowledge that my agent has a fiduciary duty to me. That's a fancy schmancy way of saying that we're looking out for you. Nevertheless, we get this bad rap about how we're all ripoff artists. And it's just, it's ridiculous. So let me just sort of spell out to you, when you deal with a real estate agent, what they can and cannot do and say. It might make you better understand why we can do some things and why we can't do other things. Right? I mean, we got a straight and narrow path we've got to follow. Let me just spell it out for you. Let me start off with what we have to say. If we have any information that's material to the transaction, so that would be any property condition or the ability of our client to perform into the terms of the contract, we have to disclose it. So in other words, if we know the roof is leaking, we have to lay that on the table. If I know that my buyer client just lost his job, I need to tell the seller that. Hey man, my client just lost his job. We're working on it, but there's a chance we may not be able to follow through with this contract. We need to let you know that. I have to let you know who I work for, right? Am I representing you, or am I representing the other guy, or am I representing everybody? Within my area of expertise, I can discuss with you contract information, uh, pr market information, like I'm gonna tell you what I think the house might be worth, or what I think the market is doing. I can uh, fill you in on negotiating strategies, but these are all suggestions, right? I cannot tell you how to spend your money. I can say, here's what I think, but here it's up to you to decide what to do with that information. What are some things that I can't say? Well, I can't disclose confidential information. Like unless the seller gives me permission in writing, I can't tell you what all the other offers are in a multiple offer situation. I can't disclose personal information. Like if my client's super depressed because Ryan Gosling didn't win the Academy Award and has been a real pain in the ass to deal with, that's between me and my client. I can't say discriminatory information. Fair housing laws protects people from being discriminated against. And so that comes into this whole area where I can't really tell you if it's a good neighborhood, if there are good schools. I can't really tell you that. I can't tell you if this is a good buy. Why? Because I don't have a crystal ball. I have a magic eight ball, yes, but it's very unreliable when it comes to predicting what's going to happen in the future regarding financial investments. I've learned not to trust it. Now there's some things that I don't have to say. For example, if the property is stigmatized, meaning that maybe a crime was committed there, somebody died there, perhaps somebody has HIV who lives there, um, there's a sexual predator who lives in the neighborhood. Those things I don't have to disclose, even if I know them. But if you ask me directly, I can't lie. I can say, listen, I can't really say that. I can't really tell you, um, but I can point you to the direction of maybe some resources where you can find that information. FYI, the best place to get that information is the Arizona Buyer's Advisory. If you're not using this when you buy a house, you're missing out on a great resource. Now, interestingly enough, if my seller says, hey, Kristen, FYI, the house is haunted, I have to tell you that because it's material to the property. Maybe it's a plus, maybe it's a negative. It's up to you, the buyer, to decide. You know, we really do our best to protect our clients and follow the rules. It's very complicated and there's a lot of situations where maybe it's not super clear what we need to do, um, but there's a lot of guidelines that help us chart the best course. So if you have any questions or comments, if you want me to help you find a haunted house, well, you know where to find me, Kristen, here in phoenix.com, that's where. Go out there and make it a beautiful day.